is it possible that bacteria the size of viruses could exist in humans and every other living organism on the planet and be a foundational cause of aging? Hello Kindred Longevity Lifestyle Designers, this is Zachary with Secrets of Longevity.com and you may have heard different people talking about this idea of calcification before a big proponent of the theory, which I'm going to say has gone beyond being just a theory, it's a fact at this point, scientifically speaking, is David Wolf. Um, you may have heard him talk about these clamshells, he calls them, or uh, almost like coral reefs that build up in people on a very, very microscopic level. These things are considered to be somewhat like bacteria. They replicate like bacteria, but they're smaller than viruses. So that's very, very small. Um, undetectable by most uh, standard microscopes used in basic tests done for medical health and medical testing. So there's been work that's been done by a variety of different doctors and uh, clinical uh, scientists that have looked into this issue of calcification and what's causing the calcification of various tissues throughout the body. So there's calcium deposits that build up in uh, arteries and veins going to the heart and from the heart and there's buildup of this calcium also in joints causing arthritis when it builds up in eyes it's cataract when it's in the gallbladder it's gallstones, kidneys, gallstones uh, and then other places of the body can also congregate around cancer, prostate cancer, breast cancer, all these things have a calcium hardening component to them and this calcium acts almost as like a foundation for other stuff to occur around it and build upon and it almost hides those things that are hiding within that from the immune system and you can imagine this stuff growing inside your body and becoming almost like a fortress for the bad guys, the bad bacteria, the bad viruses, the bad parasites obviously there's not really good parasites but all these things that are not healthy for us that want to take home in our body and start to bring our level of vitality and health down, the calcification component that takes place uh, acts as a almost like a home for these things. So if we start looking at that thing that is causing all these problems and is foundational to our health, and by the way this goes much beyond just human health, it's found in every animal that uh, dies of old age has some level of calcification that has occurred and resulted in its demise, whether it's some disease that built upon that or it just no longer could function well enough because it was so calcified that it, that animal died. So when they decided to look at this uh, in closer inspection they found that uh, there was something inside it that was causing the growth of this calcium and sort of the last debate is around whether or not this thing is living in the sense of a bacteria or if it is more like a virus. It replicates like a bacteria and behaves like a bacteria in some ways but it's so small that it's said to be impossible for it to be alive um, at least by conventional standards of the understanding of bacteria. So whether or not it's found out to be a living entity or a non-living thing doesn't matter because it's still been definitely proven to be happening in people and there's proven ways of clearing this stuff out. Uh, definitely check out this video which is on another channel, it's been online for a while and it's a really detailed animation of what exactly is occurring with calcification. There's this, they're basically calling it a bacteria, a nanobacteria, and they show it to be like a little green glob of something, and it forms this calcium shell around itself, and then it replicates, and that calcium grows outwards, and it obviously, when it collects on the wall of an artery, then inflammation occurs, stuff gets caught against it that's flowing through the blood, whether it's blood platelets causing clotting, obviously, or if it's... Uh, cholesterol that gets caught and oxidizes or triglycerides or anything that can get caught there and build up and cause problems in the arterial wall does so when that calcification starts there. Also uh, build up scar tissue is something that also goes hand in hand with this calcification component. So the idea that David Wolf has put out there, and I'll give him full credit for putting this out there with his Longevity Now program, is that you can start to dissolve this calcium shell and first of all you want to stop putting in the bad calcium so don't take um, mineral based supplements whether it's like uh, calcium from chalk, calcium from uh, coral, 
really the only calcium you want to be getting is from whole foods. Dairy is a great one, uh, raw, organic, grass-fed dairy. Um, obviously greens, there's other foods that are high in calcium. You want to get it from those sources. If you want to go to a supplement, I don't personally think there's a need with calcium, but you can always look at uh, food-based supplements or whole food-based extracts in supplement form to get any calcium you feel you need. So, yes, you definitely want to stay away from the synthetic or non-organic mineral-based calciums because that gives food or materials for these bacteria to start replicating. If you don't have that in you, they can't form those shells. And uh, you basically want to start clearing what you do have in you out by um, using calcium dissolvers. And at the same time as using a calcium dissolver, you have to use something that's uh, going to annihilate the offending microorganisms, but you can't get to them until you dissolve that calcium. So the use of weak organic acids um, is generally recommended in the forms of lemon juice, fresh squeezed lemon juice, apple cider vinegar, or other types of vinegars that are living and fermented and not pasteurized. Uh, you have also, when you start getting into the more concentrated things like folic acid, shilajit, which contains the folic acid, also humic acid and other weak organic acids. And all these things, when taken, and there's many other types that work as well, when you take these things in, they start to break down those components. Another great thing is garlic, if you can handle it, the raw garlic. I prefer it cooked, but then you start losing some of the beneficial properties of it. Um, the garlic is a two-pronged approach where it has the calcium dissolver in the sulfur-bearing compounds which are related to MSM and DMSO, so those are two other calcium dissolvers that you can utilize. So the garlic is two-pronged, it's got the calcium dissolvers, but it's also got the uh, volatile oils which burn up and almost destroy and ramp up your immune system, but also specifically hit the little bugs or critters that are hiding underneath that calcium. So using garlic to whatever level you're able to personally use it. I would use other things because the garlic I, doesn't work for my constitution, um, but that's an option if you're on a budget, of course, and also the lemon and vinegar is great on a budget. And you want to strip away that calcium and then also hit it with the ramped up immune system. So using any immune boosting food or herb is great. Some of the better ones for long-term use are definitely going to be the the medicinal mushrooms, and I'm leaving this video up here because it's such a good animation for you to understand exactly how this is happening in the body. And you also notice in that video they talk about, I believe, I might be mixing up the video with the book, Cal The Calcium Bomb, which I believe is out of print, but in either of those two sort of medical paradigms, which are great for the research side of it, but bad in the sense of finding uh, a way to solve this problem, they're recommending the use of antibiotics and other uh, immune boosting um, pharmaceuticals, which wouldn't be the path I'd recommend taking, but uh, just the fact that they discovered that and have that idea, we can take that information and turn it to a healthier possibility. So uh, using the natural forms of that two-pronged approach of the dissolver with the immune modulating or immune boosting herb, spice, food, is going to be wonderful in clearing these things out. And it's a long-term process you also want to do it as a preventative for future buildup of these things. And then you also get into, you need actual physical um, elbow grease or pressure to actually help accelerate the breaking down of this stuff. So that's going to a massage after you've downed a drink that has fulvic acid and perhaps some aloe vera which is high in the MSM type compounds. And any of these other things that would help get that two-pronged approach happening in your body. So when you have that circulating in your blood system and you're having your muscles worked on or really, really good uh, osteopathic work where they're basically breaking down that calcification component which builds up in your body, especially in the round joints as you get older, you start to work out these really tough tissues that um, would not be broken down any other way. So the idea behind this is to also to get the more internal stuff to be doing, thing, doing things like exercise and yoga and twists, specifically the twists in yoga, which you can think of as like an internal massage, to get those harder to hit places which you're not going to have someone massaging you, but you want to have things that bring some sort of force against 
wherever that calcification may or may not be building up in your body. Um, the idea over the long term is that you stay limber, flexible, and in a state of non-calcification for as long as possible. Because this is pretty well agreed upon as one of the most foundational causes of aging. And of course, this whole video is part of the ongoing series on uh, what causes aging. And so we can't say it definitively that it's the only cause of aging because there's many other things, which you can always check out this video that's been up here the whole of the time, which is sort of the table of contents video that has a whole list of other causes of aging that you can start to get lifestyle practices in place to slow down or even prevent completely from occurring. And this greatly is um, something that is sort of the forefront of longevity research. It's taking these advanced medical ideas and coming at it from a more holistic point of view and using that understanding to streamline our health and really tackle things from a preventative mindset. So check below for some links for some products that can fall into these categories like medicinal mushrooms, which are great for the immune system. Definitely the number one thing for ramping up the immune system. You can get some of the other things like the weak organic acids, shilajit, fulvic acid, up the links below. And uh, definitely leave comments if you've worked with any of these things before and let me know what you think of it. Subscribe. Favorite the video if you've uh, really liked what I've had to say. And yeah, take care and embrace life without limits.